Florida is home to 13 different species of resident bats, so we've got 13 different kinds of bats that live here all year long. These bats are really fascinating animals because bats are the only mammals that are capable of true flight. They're also very beneficial to us. Almost all the bats in Florida feed on insects, and many of the insects they feed on are actually pests to our agricultural crops. So in general, bats are beneficial and they're really fascinating, but there are instances where they can become a nuisance. For example, if you have a colony of bats that has taken up residence in a building, there may be instances where you want to safely and humanely get those bats out of the building. So what we're going to be talking about in this video is how you can determine for sure whether you've got bats in a building, and if you've got them, how do you safely and effectively get them out of that building. Bat experts from around the state will lead you through a five-step process that has proven effective in safely removing bats from buildings. There are different reasons why bats might roost in buildings. Sometimes they have a natural roost site nearby that's been destroyed and they move into the building for temporary refuge. At other times, the bats might actually find something in the building structure that's desirable. Bats like stable temperatures, and they also like areas that are free from disturbance, and some buildings offer those. So if you think you have a colony of bats using a building, but you're not entirely sure, there are several different things that you can look for to determine whether you have them. If the bats are in an accessible location, such as an attic, you can certainly go up during the day, which is when the bats would be roosting, and look if you find the actual animals themselves. Another thing that you can do if the bats are roosting in a place that's inaccessible is you can watch the bats emerging at sunset from the building. So in this instance, what you'd want to do is walk around the building during the day looking for locations where the bats might be getting in and out of the building. All the bats in Florida are relatively small and they can fit in and out of a cavity that's about the size of your thumb. So you'll basically want to walk around the building looking for any crevice that's about the size of your thumb that bats could be getting in and out of. And you want to pay especially close attention to locations around the roof line because this is where bats often get in and out. If there were a large colony of bats, there would probably be some light brown smudges around that entrance hole because as the bats go in and out, they tend to leave some of their body oils behind. If you find any crevices like that, then what you'd want to do is watch them right at sunset. The bats would be leaving sometime between maybe 15 minutes before sunset and 30 minutes after sunset, so you'd want to just camp out and watch that spot for that period of time to see if any bats are leaving. Another option is to look for guano. So guano is what we call bat scat. Um, guano is relatively small in size. It's about the size of a Tic Tac. It tends to be fairly dry. So if you crush it between your fingers, it would crumble. And because the bats feed on insects, if you looked very carefully at a crumbled pellet, you would see small metallic flecks of insect wings. The last thing is to actually listen for them. So bats make uh, calls that are high in frequency. They're beyond the human range of hearing for the most part. But in social situations, when the bats are together with their roost mates, they sometimes chatter to one another, especially right before they're getting ready to leave the roost site around sunset. Whenever a bat is roosting in a building and you have colonies of bats that are in buildings, the only safe and effective way to remove those bats is through an exclusion. An exclusion is a process where a one-way valve is put up and the bats can exit out of this valve, but they aren't able to return and enter. In Florida, bats begin gathering to give birth to their young in mid-April. For this reason, we have a maternity season. This is a period when exclusions are not allowed. It goes from mid-April to mid-August. So from April 15th to August 15th, you cannot conduct an exclusion. You can safely conduct exclusions between August 16th and April 14th. When you are conducting an exclusion, there are some important points to remember. First is that you need to make sure that the temperature is compatible with bats being out, flying, and looking for insects. Exclusions can only be conducted when you have four forecast days where the temperatures are going to be above 50 degrees. Another key thing to remember is that once you've decided to conduct the exclusion and you have those four days that are forecast, you must leave the exclusion device up for the four full days before you take it down. It's a minimum of four nights with temperatures above 50 degrees for it to be a safe and effective exclusion. 
Before starting the exclusion, it's important to walk around the home or the building and look for other places that bats may get in once they're excluded from their current roosts. So around this building, one of the things that you would look at is the screening in the soffit. And right up there, there's some screening that's not attached. And anywhere you can get your thumb, a bat can get in. So you want to look for holes and crevices that are about the width of your thumb. Another place on this building is the top of these columns. Um, you can see there's a gap between the column and that horizontal beam. So bats often go into a place like that and then they climb down inside the column. So that would be a place that you might need to address before you do the exclusion. There is no one simple recipe for choosing and installing exclusion devices. Each situation is unique and there's no one size fits all approach. You need to assess factors such as the materials used to construct the building, the size, shape, and location of bat entry holes, and the size of the bat species in order to select the best materials to fashion your exclusion device and decide how best to attach the exclusion devices. In some instances, netting may be the most suitable option for excluding bats. In other cases, tubes may be the most suitable. Next, we'll describe how each of these materials could be used, starting first with the netting and then with the tubes. We want to uh, put netting over top of this hole so the bats can come out, but they can't get back in. So what we're going to do is put the netting from here and drop it down about 18 inches, 12 to 18 inches down, so that they can crawl down or drop down underneath the netting, fly away. But when they come back, they'll try to get in where the hole is and they won't be able to get back in. So the screen can be fastened up with either staples or with duct tape. If it's a wood background, then staples will work well. But if it's like this type of siding, duct tape works the best. But you want to use a good quality of duct tape so that it'll hold up because you're going to leave it up at least for four nights or more, depending on the weather. Okay, now the trick is that you want it to bulge out so the bats can get out. So you don't want it flush up against the hole to discourage them emerging, you want it to look natural to them as they come out and leave room for them to crawl behind it or drop down behind it. You want it so you can put your hand up underneath of it and when you've done that, you've allowed enough room for the bats to get out. The product that we prefer most is this netting. It's a quarter inch netting that's very flexible. Unfortunately, this netting is not available locally. Um, you have to order it online. The reason we like this netting, it's too small for the bats to get their wings caught through. Sometimes people have tried this um, thicker mesh and it's a lot stiffer. Hardware cloth doesn't work as well for bat exclusions. Um, it can be good for sealing up after exclusions if you have gaps that you need to cover or even if it's just temporary. Here we have some bisqueen or plastic sheeting and sometimes people will put this up to do an exclusion but there can be problems with this. The bisqueen can block the airflow. Bats may sense that there's something blocking their exit and they may not come out. But the other problem we've seen with using this queen is that sometimes the wind will blow it flush up against the hole and then the bats can't get out. What we have here is a situation where bats can take advantage of an opening uh, between this brick wall and this metal soffit. And as you can see, the gap here in the corner is sufficiently wide enough, it's wider than my thumb, uh, and bats can get in and out uh, very easily and they can take up residence uh, inside the soffit. So what we're going to try to do is use uh, an exclusion technique uh, that uses these plastic tubes. And the advantage of the tube is that it's slick on the inside and the bats can't get the proper traction needed to uh, climb back up the tube. And when we put the tube in place where the bats are going in and out and we're going to put this in a vertical orientation and the bats are going to be forced to go down the tube and come out the bottom where they'll fly out but they won't be able to get back in 
and so over a period of a uh, period of about four nights, uh, the bats will evict themselves. Now, to make sure that the bats are forced down this tube, what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this um, rigid plastic mesh, which I have pre-cut, and we're going to wedge this in place like so. And this is going to prevent the bats from bypassing the exclusion tube. And then what we can do is we can take um, some caulk and we'll uh, caulk this in place. And then with the um, this particular type of exclusion tube, this old caulk tube that's been cleaned out, we've cut some tabs, and these tabs will be handy anchor points uh, to enable us to attach uh, the tube in place. And we could, uh, using one technique, we could drill a hole in one tab and run some wire and hang it in place. We could also take a, a drill and uh, set some screws and anchor that in place. We have some um, exclusion um, tubes available commercially uh, that you can get these online. And um, they come in several different configurations, but they have holes that are pre-drilled so that you can attach them uh, in place. And you want to um, angle these because they're, sh they're shorter. You want to make sure you angle them downward so the bats won't be able to get uh, back up inside. Um, you can also use uh, some ordinary PVC pipe. Uh, it's a little bit more challenging to work with. Um, you might have to drill a hole and um, uh, run some wire through it and either find a hanging point or set a screw uh, or nail in place that will enable you to uh, hang the tube in place. But same principle, uh, slick on the inside so the bats can't get traction to uh, crawl back up inside. The final step of an effective bat exclusion is sealing up all the holes where the bats originally got into the building. You want to be sure that you seal up the holes immediately after you take down the netting. Don't let even a single night go by where the bats may be able to regain entry to the building. So if you do have bats in your building and you haven't done an exclusion to keep them out yet, uh, you do want to make sure you don't just go and seal up all the holes where they're coming in with the bats still inside the building. That's the biggest mistake you can make because the bats will be trapped in there and they're not just going to sit there and nothing happen, they're going to die uh, or they're going to try to get out. And if, since you've sealed up all the holes to the outside, they're going to try to find any hole that goes inside. So we often have people that have bats come into their house and that's sometimes after they've sealed up all the holes to the outside. So if you have bats in your building, there are a couple of things that you uh, don't want to do because they're either illegal or, or not effective. Uh, one of the first things people like to think about doing is putting rat poison out for bats. That's ineffective. The bats aren't going to consume that. They're insect eaters, so uh, you're wasting your time with rat poison. Mothballs are the only approved repellent for bats, but they're not very effective. Some people talk about leaving lights on to keep the bats out. Uh, you can do that in some situations where you have a building that is uh, doesn't have many cracks and crevices inside, rafters to hide behind, small places. If you have any of those places in the, in the room you're trying to keep bats out of, the bats will just go into the little dark nooks and crannies. You also may hear about uh, ultrasonic noise makers or sound makers that uh, are supposed to keep bats out. These are little instruments that generate a sound that's a higher frequency than we can hear, but the bats can detect it. Those have been proven to be uh, not effective either. The bats just get used to that noise. We've heard people uh, just gathering the bats up or even vacuuming the bats out of uh, buildings. Uh, that, of course, is inhumane to the bats, but it's also illegal to pick the bats up. In conclusion, if you think you may have a colony of bats in a building, there are several steps to consider. First, determine for sure whether you have a colony of bats. Second, check the calendar to determine if it's bat maternity season. If it's between April 15th and August 15th, then wait. If it's between August 16th and April 14th, then check the outside of your building for bat entry points. 
Seal up all potential holes or crevices a bat could fit through that do not seem to be used by bats, but don't seal those holes you think are actively being used by bats. Then purchase either netting or tubes appropriate for a bat exclusion, properly attach them over the holes or crevices being used by bats, so that the bats can drop out beneath the netting or through the tubes, but can't get back in. Lastly, remove the netting or tubes after you've had them up for a minimum of four consecutive nights with temperatures over 50 degrees and immediately seal the holes permanently. Congratulations, you've now completed your bat exclusion. If you have any questions, please contact the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, University of Florida IFAS Extension, or Florida Bat Conservancy.